Good morning. We continue to look at problems with GoalSeq, and we're going to look at a collection of problems where GoalSeq has difficulties. Part of why we look under the hood is to figure out where GoalSeq will give us a bad answer. The first example we want to look at is where there are several right answers. And so it's useful looking at a graph. If I take a simple graph like x cubed minus 3x, I see three answers. And so depend, goal seek slides downhill to get to an answer. So at about 1, if I go before that, I'm going to go to 0. If I go after that, I'm going to go to the, cube, the square root of 3. So if I look at goal seek, I've got x cubed minus x. If I start at 0.55, I want to set up my goal seek. I would like that to go to 0, and I'm going to change cell A3. And I get an, an answer which is trying to be 0. So that was one answer. I'm going to cancel that, but instead of starting at 0.55, I'm going to start at 2, do my goal seek. I'd like to change b3, th make that equal to 0 by changing a3. We've got the answer of 1 because we started on the other side of that. The second problem that can go wrong is what happens if we ask GoalSeek to answer a question that doesn't have an answer. And so what I'm going to set up is I'm looking at x squared plus 1 and I want to know the root of it. Well, obviously it doesn't have a root. It never crosses the axis. It's above the axis. But we can still ask goal seek to do that problem. I do what if analysis goal seek. I'd like b7 to be 0 by changing a7. And in this case, you'll notice goal seek goes crazy until it says, I've worked on this long enough. I closest answer, my last answer I've gotten is a huge number, 7.9 times 10 to the 26th, but it may not be a solution. And in fact, it's not a solution. That goal seek is using Newton's method and winds up bouncing all over the place if there isn't really an answer. The third kind of problem is the reverse. If I'm looking at y equals 1 over x to the fourth, that of course doesn't have a root. But I can ask goal seek. I'd like b12 to go to 0 by changing a12. So I'm trying to solve 0 equals 1 over x to the fourth. And it says, yes, I have an answer for that. That happens at 6.134. Found a solution. And what we need to remember is goal seek isn't asking a question about equality. It's saying, when do you get pretty close? And this is an asymptotic curve, so it will get pretty close, but not get to the answer. But when it gets close enough, goal seek thinks it's found an answer. Similar to that, I'm going to look at what happens with x cubed minus 50x and look at when is that equal to 500. We see there's a root, but if I'm trying to slide downhill, I could run into problems unless I get close enough that sliding downhill actually takes me to a root. So I'm going to try goal seek on this at various different places to start with. So if I start, for example, at 1, that 1 plugged in f of 1 is minus 49, I'm going to do what if analysis, goal seek, plug in I want this to go to the value 500. I'm going to plug in A21. And we see it's going crazy, and it doesn't get to the right answer. It just says, I got confused there. Looking at the picture, I need to get past 4, so I'm sliding downhill. So I'm going to suspect 4 will cause problems, but 5 should work. So I'm going to look at this and do my goal seek again. I'd like to go to 500 by changing A27. 
and four doesn't quite get close enough. Going to try five. What if analysis? Goal seek B29 going to 500 by changing A29. And it gets an answer. So the basic thing to remember is on goal seek, I need to be close enough to the answer that I can slide downhill to the answer. If I'm asked a question where there is no answer, it's going to try its method 500 times and then we'll give that answer but tell you it doesn't think it's come to it. And if I have multiple answers, again, I'm going to slide downhill to the answer that I get to. Thank you.